Hi, Ray here. Last winter, I showed off a Christmas present from my wife Amanda, a roomy photo case. And I'd been looking for one big enough and deep enough to contain most, if not all, of my video gear for location work. Rigs, lights, etc. Something that would also fit in the back of the car, take the load off my back, and be wheelable. Yes. <laughs> Is that a word? Anyway, so since Amanda picks up on my photo wants and needs, thank you, sweetie, along came the ultimate photography roller bag made by Strobe Pro, who are also a reseller of Godox products in Canada. I was pretty happy with it overall, but I had to admit it was still a bit of a pain to drag around, especially on uneven ground. The wheels really aren't designed for gravel. The handle was and is uncomfortable on long hauls, it requires you to twist your um, trunk, I guess you'd say, <laughs> and my arms aren't even long enough. It hits you in the heels. I'd mused a few times that the answer might be one of those little wagons sold at various outlets like uh, Home Depot, Best Buy, and other local stores like Canadian Tire and London Drugs in Canada here, which obviously sells more than pharmaceuticals. In fact, they still have a photo film lab and camera department. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I was shopping for some cheap sunglasses after my recent uh, eye surgery when I stumbled on this all-terrain cart from Creative Outdoor Distribution on sale for half price of the original retail of $220 Canadian. So we grabbed it. Now the question was, would it fit the roller bag? There wasn't a demo model of the cart on the floor, just the box sale item, and I couldn't remember the outside dimensions of the bag. I hadn't considered that there might be a folding model of one of these carts. So this feature is really attractive as far as loading it into the back of the station wagon, a <laughs> kind of wagon in wagon. Last weekend, I discovered it's stocked by most of the aforementioned stores. In fact, London Drugs put it on sale for $65.99 last week. So trip back to the store netted us a refund of $50. It's an excellent unit. It seems to be relatively well built, and it's as if it was made <laughs> for the roller bag. When I don't need the big case, it'll carry my other bags, not to mention camping gear, beach paraphernalia, all kinds of stuff. And it even has drink holders on this side, or perhaps lens holders. So it pays to keep an eye on prices after the fact, I guess. And finally, just a couple of interesting Nikon developments I wanted to comment on. First, the recent announcement that Tamron will be building Z-mount lenses. In fact, the company has released the 70-300 f 4.5-6.3 Di3 RxD, which was made popular in Sony E-mount, and now it's for Z-mount. You can order it now, or pre-order at the moment, through sites like B&H, and I'll include the B&H B &H affiliate link if you're planning on buying, and you'd like to support my channel at no extra cost to you. It's great to see Tamron joining the Z-mount revolution, so to speak. What's the deal with Canon with that shot across the bow of lens manufacturers, uh, Viltrox at this point, telling them to cease and desist reverse engineering the RF mount? Actually, it seems like a shot in their own foot to me. Anyway, I've owned a couple uh, of Tamron lenses over the years. I'm particularly fond of this F-mount 17-35 2.8 for DI LD a spherical lens. Too bad it doesn't focus with my Z cameras. But anyway, I considered selling it, but I can't get what it's worth, so I keep it for use with my remaining F mount film cameras. Rumor has it that the original Z6 is about to be discontinued. In fact, it's listed now as discontinued on uh, B&H. It's showing up as an old product on the official Nikon Japan website. It joins the Z7, which was marked discontinued in August. So I'll be hanging on to the two Z6s I own, which have recorded so much of my content here in the last three years. 
There's more rumors that the Z8 is not just a fantasy camera, that it'll become a camera you can actually buy next year. If it comes without a built-in grip and a competitive price, well, I might be tempted. <laughs> In litigation news, there's an update on the red lawsuit against Nikon, claiming Nikon is infringing on its video compression patents. In its response filed in a California court in recent days, Nikon refutes RED's claims. Nikon Corporation's answer reads in part, RED is not entitled to injunctive relief because it has, at a minimum, no irreparable injury and an adequate remedy at law for Nikon's alleged infringements of the patents in suit. RED will be unable to establish, one, it has suffered any injury, let alone an irreparable injury. Two, remedies available at law, such as monetary damages, would be inadequate to compensate for any injury. Three, considering the balance of hardships between RED and Nikon, a remedy in equity is warranted. And four, the public interest would be served by an injunction. Nikon is asking the court to rule in its favor, of course, to dismiss Red's claims and award Nikon costs associated with the claim. So it'll be interesting to see what the court decides. Not that I can see now, as individual owners of Z9 cameras, we could be forced to give up what we were given with firmware 2.10, I think it was. For those who have made NRAW a critical part of their workflow, this might be seen as going on the wagon. <laughs> And speaking of wagons, it seems people are jumping off the Instagram wagon onto Vero, which advertises itself as true social. Certainly it looks better and has more viewing options. Photos look way better, especially on desktops. There's a dedicated app for that. So I'm trying to build a presence there and I hope you'll take a look. On this platform, we just reached 4,000 subs. So thanks to all of you who stuck around. Well, I hope you found this little video useful. Would you have use for a little wagon like this? Let me know in the comments. Hold on, I got some late breaking news from Nikon for you. I uh, just got an email from the Nikon mailing list last night announcing the imminent arrival of a new 17 to 28 2.8 budget zoom. So that joins the uh, 28 to 75 2.8 for what I think would be a really great little lightweight and affordable travel kit. It'd just be awesome. You know, quite often I want a little bit uh, more light and subject separation than I can get from this uh, 14 to 30 f4 lens. So who knows? Yeah, this might be a good candidate. Anyway, I noticed <laughs> this morning that my Australian buddy Matt Irwin has done a great little review of the new lens. In fact, both of those lenses that I just mentioned so um, I suggest you go check it out. If you found this video useful or interesting, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Oh, and before I forget, take care of yourself. Cheers, we'll see you later.